Hey, you guys, welcome back to the pod. It's so good to see you. And I want to talk today about giving and receiving feedback, because I think that a key ingredient in effective performance management and development is the ability or the skill of giving and receiving feedback. And I know so many of you are really working to create a bigger business, to create a more effective business and career path for yourselves. And honestly, I think this is a great personal skill too. So I think that it's vital to be able to understand the components of feedback because we're giving feedback all day long, whether it is in a professional setting or possibly at a store or a coffee counter or with your own child or spouse for that matter. We're always giving feedback. And I think that if we can develop the skill where we feel that the conversation is really productive and powerful, we all benefit from that. So let's dig in and look at some things about feedback and, and how we can get better at this skill. So much of this really revolves around energy, the energy that we bring into the conversation and the energy that we are seeing in the other person. And so I will say that just being aware of that energy can also do a lot to create a positive space for you to be able to share your observations and information with the other person. Or if you're the one receiving the feedback, for you to be able to be open-minded and understand that whatever is being shared with you is shared in the spirit of helping you. And that's a big part of why we should not avoid the feedback because listen, we can't expect everything to always be smooth sailing or go perfectly. The feedback that we get can really help us make adjustments and get more strategic. And the feedback we get could also be very positive feedback. It could be recognizing, acknowledging what's going well, which really solidifies and anchors the behavior so that it continues. It's really about connecting. And I think some of the key benefits of feedback, if it is constructive, is going to help us improve our performance. I think that it can also prevent performance from going off track or getting misaligned and wasting valuable time for everyone involved. And I think that when the feedback is appreciative, it builds someone's motivation. It builds the trust in the relationship between you and the other person. It definitely helps to enforce or reinforce the positive habits so that it continues. And so all of that's very encouraging. And listen, when we're working at a high level within a team or organization, we can forget basically to stop and share feedback and just stop and say, okay, let's evaluate what's been happening and let's talk about what's working, what's not working. And we can just keep going and kind of being on that machine and not taking the time to reflect and have those conversations. We would miss so many great opportunities. So that's another valuable part of feedback. And listen, the time that you take to give feedback, positive or constructive, it, it just will strengthen relationships. It will really help, as I said, the connection that you have with your team members. It gives you an opportunity to really say to someone, listen, I'm here to help and I want to support you and I appreciate you or here are some things that I think could help or even asking the other person. I think a big part of feedback should be questions to help the other person self-discover some elements of what's been happening and what might be able to be done differently so that they feel empowered and they feel like they're a part of the solution. So in today's show, I wanted to give you some really tangible advice, some very hands-on strategy around giving and receiving feedback, because a lot of us are going to find ourselves working in teams, working within departments, or working with contractors and vendors. So the opportunity to give feedback is going to always be there. And hopefully the opportunity to receive feedback will be there too. Because if you take anything away from this conversation is that feedback is productive when it's done with the right energy, with the right intention. And you will learn something that will be very valuable to you. And that's why we should be willing to share. Now, you might be wondering when is the right time to share feedback. I think that if it's possible, you should be 
able to give feedback in the moment. So if you see something going well, stop and acknowledge it, give them the recognition. If you see something is off, share the observation. Because if you wait too long, your observation loses some of its um, power to really help them see it from another perspective. So I think that if you can share it when it's happening, or at least on a day-to-day -day basis, a lot of high-level teams take time either in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, not just to talk about what they plan to do or what they've done, but put it in the context of what's working and what's not working. So if you could share feedback with your team daily, then you also will be very timely in making the adjustments and implementing the strategies before it's too late. Because if something is not working well and it's going off track, if you wait too long to talk about it, the solutions you come up with may not be as effective. So being able to do that daily is much more powerful. And just again, feedback becomes less useful if you hold on to it for too long. So when you notice something changing, that's your opportunity to stop and say, can I share some thoughts with you? And especially if it's around someone's performance, because that could be a, a really useful tool for them to develop self-awareness, for them to be able to say, oh, I didn't know, I didn't realize. So give them the opportunity to recognize what might be happening so that they can make adjustments, or again, if it's something positive, to uplift them. and. I think the next thing we want to talk about on the topic of feedback is how to share constructive feedback, because really like any good quality conversation, it's always better if you can discuss this feedback face-to-face. -face. I, I don't feel that effective communication around feedback should be done in an email. And I think that's the least personal approach, my opinion. But I would say even over the phone is not as powerful. And I understand sometimes we're busy and we may even be working in different spaces. Some people are working in, in remote locations. Yet, if, if that's the case, then at least get on a Zoom call where you can see each other and feel like you have that connection. I, I think that when your feedback is constructive, Having that opportunity to be face-to-face -face really will decrease the chances of things being misunderstood because when you look at communication, so much of what goes into communication is tonality and body language, right? We know that the words we say are only 7% of our total communication. And so if you don't have the opportunity to sit with someone and for them to hear your energy and emotion in the conversation, see you smiling or giving them some kind of support physically, then they can interpret things around the message that maybe you don't intend. It's really important if you're going to give constructive feedback to take every opportunity to do it in person, face-to-face, -face, or at a minimum on a Zoom call. And then when you set up this conversation, I would just share a few tips with you to make it even more constructive and positive. I would say that your first opportunity is to outline the situation. And so you want to be specific. You want to share the facts of whatever it is that you want to talk about and who was involved. And you just want to share the observations in a way that doesn't feel like someone is being criticized or attacked, but that you're here to help and you're raising their self-awareness. And make sure that you leave space in the conversation for them to, to share thoughts with you too. As I said a minute ago, ask them questions so that they can feel empowered to be a part of a conversation, not just you on a, a monologue. So again, I think when you sit down to, to talk to someone around this feedback, be aware of your energy, be aware of behavior, be aware of the way that you start the conversation, prepare them for the feedback. And if the feedback is coming from someone else's observation, which sometimes we find that we step in as a leader or a manager, and we have to be the one to deliver the feedback based on something else that was shared with us, 
then just again, stick to the facts, stay in a logical place so that the emotions are under control and make sure that you gathered all the information so that nothing is misinterpreted. Be as specific as you can with the person who's giving you the feedback too. Make sure you ask any clarifying questions around what it is that they're sharing with you and just stay to the topic, just be relevant. And another thing that we have to understand about sharing feedback is the impact that it's going to create, right? So we have to check in with the, the person that we're sharing the information with, make sure that they're feeling like they understand what you're talking about, that they're aware of what's happening or the impact of the feedback, that there's an opportunity for you to ask those questions so that maybe there's more information they can share with you that you're not even aware of either. So be open to learning more from the person on the other side of that conversation. I think it's about getting into the conversation with this thought. Seek first to understand. Don't assume that all the information that you have that you want to share in this feedback session is the total picture, right? So be willing to ask and be willing to hear what the other person might add for, for your knowledge. And all of that then becomes the perspective. And so I think we have to recognize that there will be more information or supporting information that comes in. And, and that's important for us to acknowledge. And so another part of giving feedback is to invite that person to share, make sure that they know right from the beginning, hey, listen, I just want to share some observations with you. I want to give you some feedback. And in doing that, I also want to hear your perspective on it. I want to hear your information that you might have to, to shed more light on the situation. So invite them to be a part of that dialogue and that their responses are valued and important too. And then when you feel like you've gotten to a point in the conversation where it's all out on the table, then you work towards a resolution or solution or an understanding and make sure that you're all in agreement and that if there is follow-up, if there are actionable items that will result from this conversation, make sure that you schedule a time to do more follow-up on that and have sort of an accountability session. That's important, not only because we want to see that things happen, but I think it speaks volume to the other person that this conversation really did matter and that they matter and that the progress matters. And so if you don't have the follow-up, it, it just loses that intensity and it loses that relevance. And, and I think you lose some of that connectivity with the other person. So I think that's huge. Now. In sharing appreciative feedback, again, a lot of the same things apply. I think it is about being timely. Everybody wants to hear good things and get that feedback. Don't forget to give it. I know we're all busy and sometimes we take for granted that the people around us or our team members might just know that we appreciate them, but everyone loves to hear it. So take the time to do that and try to do it as quickly or as close to the event as possible because who wants to hear they did a great thing four months ago, right? We want to hear that you did a great thing yesterday. And I think that it's also great when we show up as someone who is championing for other people and feeling that we can praise and acknowledge what they're doing well, because that just creates and boosts morale and creates opportunity for everyone to work better together. So I think that's really important. All right, so now let's shift into how to receive feedback with some grace and how to really just be in a space where we're open to hearing and acknowledging what's being shared with us. And again, it's just understanding that this is such a key element of just working in partnership together and collaborating together and for us to build better teams and for us to be willing to ask for feedback and then receive it. And so when we are on the receiving end of the feedback, it's just a matter of listening carefully and not making any assumptions other than hearing what is being said and staying in a place of curiosity on this end too, staying in a place of understanding that whatever the feedback 
is and what's being shared with us. Maybe we we weren't aware, maybe we missed something and, and that's human sometimes. So just being present and listening because if you're not really present and listening to the feedback that's being shared, you're gonna miss the learning opportunity. Sometimes we put ourselves emotionally in a place of feeling defensive and the moment we feel defensive, we put up a wall, our brain starts going in other places. And so we might be formulating our response, formulating a question and missing what is being said. So just try to be really present and listen carefully. And then just reflect back on what you're hearing and just ask yourself again, if there is uh, something in that message that you can acknowledge is, is true and just realize that there's a reason why this person is taking the time to share the feedback with you and that it's important. And then if you need to check in with them for some more clarity and understanding, do so. Feel that you can ask questions, feel that you can understand about the nuances of whatever happened and your impact in that or your part in that. And look for the opportunity. Look for the gift of what this information can provide you in terms of growth. Realize that what is being shared with you is really something that can help you grow, can help you to do it differently or better the next time. It's helping you with your self-awareness. And it's really valuable information. And without it, you may not be able to hit your full potential in some areas. So if you can find that space and be grateful for the message, for the awareness, then say thank you. Say thank you not only to yourself, but to the person delivering the feedback. Tell them that you appreciate them taking the time to share this with you. And even if it's uncomfortable, understand that we're always going to find ourselves at least once in our life in a place to receive feedback that may be constructive. And I say at least once with a lot of air quotes, <laughs> because it's, we're not perfect. This is not about perfection. The goal should never be perfection. While the goal is probably to succeed at a high level, to excel, to be a high achiever, we just have to know that it's impossible to always get it right. We're human. We may be developing our, our skill set, our leadership. And so we may not always have all the answers. We may not always be completely in control of our emotions. We may not always say the right things or do the right things. And if someone is going to take the time to give you that feedback, just appreciate that. Understand that it will help you, even if it is uncomfortable. Say thank you inwardly and outwardly. And know that you can always learn from this and that they took the time to share their perspective, which might have been uncomfortable for them too. And that's really what is at the root of this, which is another reason why I wanted to talk about feedback, is that it's about sharing perspective. And listen, everyone's perspective becomes their reality. So it's also just understanding that in a conversation like this around feedback, the reality that one person experienced might be different than the reality that you experienced. And so having the conversation allows us to, to take a step back and try to see it from someone else's point of view, which is very powerful in helping us to grow and develop and become more strategic in our thinking. So I think that is huge. And just like I said, when I shared some tips with you around giving feedback in the receiving of the feedback, understand that even if it's not offered, maybe you suggest action items, right? I think that a powerful way to end a conversation around feedback is that the parties agree that there might be some follow-up action, right? So whether it's agreeing to do something in a different way, whether it's a commitment to some kind of change in behavior or procedure, there, that we agree that we're going to do something different and take some action and that we follow up with each other on it too. It could be something as simple as in a week to say, hey, how are you doing with that? Because again, it shows that this conversation mattered and this conversation was important. It wasn't just saying, hey, don't do this or I need you to do that. It's about transformation. It's about growth and it's about moving forward. It's about progress. And that's why I think the action items are, are really important. So 
To just wrap this up today, I think some key points around this giving and receiving feedback is just knowing that, honestly, we all need it. All of us need the feedback because without it, we are never completely sure if we're on the right track. Without it, we're not completely sure if what we're doing is making the impact we intend. And so I think, especially when it comes to running high-level teams or hitting our goals, that feedback is huge, both constructive and appreciative, right? We need both sides of that. And I think we have really a responsibility, maybe even an obligation to share feedback as part of performance engagement, as part of leading high-level teams. Try to give that feedback in the moment or as close to the moment as possible so that the conversation really holds its merit and has more relevance. And also because then I think the action steps become clearer too when it's fresh. And because the more you store up information or wait to give feedback, chances are when you do deliver the feedback, if it's been stored up for a while, it's not going to have the same energy around it. And it may have some negative emotions attached to it because let's face it, resentment might build up or misunderstanding start to fester. So it really is much more productive if the feedback is given right around the time that the observation was made. And I will just say, finally, that feedback presents all of us with an opportunity to just improve ourselves, to do it better, do it differently for us to develop. And we just have to get more comfortable with that's always part of the journey. It's always our opportunity uh, to find ways to do it better. And um, that's what makes us high achievers. That's what makes businesses thrive. And for us to succeed is knowing that there's always an opportunity to get better. And so I trust that you found this to be helpful. And if you did, feel free to share with someone that you think could benefit from the message today. And I appreciate you doing that because when you share the podcast and you help other people to connect with the content here, not only are you doing a great service for them and sharing things that can help them, but it helps me and it helps us to create more content and really continue this podcast. So I appreciate that very much. And I want your feedback. So please be willing to share what you love about this podcast. Give us uh, that feedback on any of the platforms that you listen to Monday Morning Mojo. And also, if you haven't already, please go to Facebook and join our group, Monday Morning Mojo, because that's also a place where I share content and additional resources. And I'd love for you to be a part of that community. So thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you next week.